So I just finished doing 19.2. It wasn't pretty, but I have some experience now to understand what goes into that workout. I got to watch Travis Mayer do it, got to watch Noah Olson do it, got to watch our training group on site do it. And I'm gonna break down the workout into three specific categories. So people that didn't finish the first two rounds, people that were in rounds three or four, and then people that got to the fifth round. Then for all of those groups, I'm gonna break down some key variables to improve upon a second attempt, or if you haven't done a second attempt, maybe reviewing your 16.2 video to hit your 19.2 attempt, or just some helpful tips to be able to improve on your first run through. So enjoy. Whether you wanna shave seconds off your time, improve your second attempt, or if you're just having second thoughts about doing the open, we got you covered with our second thoughts. All right, in 19.1, I split the workout up and I put labels, intermediate, advanced, elite. I'm not gonna do that because I had some complaining and heard that people got offended by falling into the wrong category. So inst Hashtag butt hurt. Yeah. <laughs> instead of doing that now, I'm just gonna break it up in terms of where you finished in the workout. It seems like the overall capacity of people can fall into these three categories. Maybe this middle category is split into two different types of athletes, but I feel like this is enough to kind of give some guidance. And I think the fact that we've already done this workout three years ago and you have tips videos all over from that, people could have watched old videos of themselves doing workouts, old performances of people doing workouts, leaning on the experience of people in the community. There's not that much new stuff that I would have gotten from what, from doing the workout myself and having watched a bunch of athletes. So I have some key variables for all scores and then the three different groups that I have categorized are not making it out of the eight minute window. So that's the first two rounds. Then the 12 to 16 minute window, which would be either finishing three or four rounds and then finishing the workout. The things I think the groups can do better can be split in based on where you finish. So for the people that are in the eight minute window, having spoken to a couple people that got crushed in that you know, second barbell weight, whether that was masters athletes with scaled weights or whether it was just people that were trying to get out of that second barbell and get into the third barbell, it seemed like a lot of people didn't really respect the difficulty of the workout. And I think that one of the best ways to do that is ignore elite performers. I don't think people have a real understanding for how much better somebody that can finish this workout is relative to just somebody who's generally fit doing classes or training 90 minutes a day. The aggregate gymnastics volume that they do in their weekly training and the aggregate barbell cycling volume that they do in their weekly training is so high and you can't really fake that. There are some types of workouts that you can kind of navigate by having a good strategy and having a good plan, but if you haven't been under the barbell repeatedly under fatigue when your core and grip and all of that stuff is blown up, you don't really have a, a real respect for what elite performers are doing from a training perspective. So first things first, go into the workout, respect how difficult it is and also try to ignore what you've seen from a performance perspective of the people that have finished it. The other things, people had planned breaks in their toes to bar, but what I've seen with people when they're doing this uh, first two rounds and they're getting stuck there is that their breaks on toes to bar are far too long. So if you're planning to do doubles or triples in your toes to bar, and then your breaks are still 10 or 15 seconds long, that's not gonna be the best way to get through that toes to bar in an adequate amount of time to beat the time cap. So you have to be mindful of what those rest breaks look like in terms of total time, especially if you're only doing you know, three reps in each one of your or three reps to get to 25 in each one of your sets. That's a lot of different breaks that you've planned in there. You need to be mindful of how long those take so that you're not chewing away the time that you could potentially have on the last barbell to get out of that round. The other thing I've seen is breaks on the double unders. So planning breaks on double unders is a really good idea. If your double unders are sound enough that you're confident that you can step up and do 25-25. If you have a plan of doing a broken double under set, so doing 25, 25, and then you miss at 15, then going 15, then taking a break there because you missed, and then going to 25 and stopping there because that was your original plan isn't really the ideal way to be able to beat that eight minute clock. That eight minute clock comes pretty quickly, and if you're adding rest breaks throughout, it's not gonna be something that you can offset 
to be able to finish those rounds. So if you do have a plan to break your double unders and you miss, you might have to just count that as your rest break. So you're going, you're going, you're going, you miss at 15. Instead of trying to rush to get to 25, try to be cognizant enough to be like, okay, I missed, take my break here, and then try to do 35 to finish so that you're still only doing two sets of double unders as opposed to three with two rest breaks because those missed times add up so much more when you're also taking rest breaks within the set. So that's what I've seen mostly from people that are finishing in the first two rounds. The people that are finishing in the third and fourth round, it is a different level of capacity. So you're doing either 75 toes to bar or 100 toes to bar. And I think that's really a big separator, the gymnastics capability and density. However, I think that the same thing is happening that people are getting to that last set of cleans, whether it's the, for men, 225, 275, and for females, 145, 175. They're getting to whatever their final bar is, and they're getting bottlenecked in terms of not having enough time to go at the pace and cadence that they can accomplish to be able to finish the set. So instead of trying to break that into two different groups, I figured it just makes sense to talk about that group as if it were one level of fitness capacity, even though there's still a pretty broad range within those two, um, two rounds of accomplishment. <clears throat> the things that we can do better, either one of those. Get to the last set of cleans with more time. So obviously, that's like a Captain Obvious statement. You wanna get to the last set of cleans that you know you're gonna be bottlenecked in with more time, but the video review to be able to make that happen is gonna be super important. So refer back to this when I finish the key variables for all people to improve. The other thing that I think people can do better here is set a clock and not go by feel. In my execution, I had a clock set for my cleans, which was really beneficial for me to get through my clean sets well, but I didn't have a pre-established clock set for my toes to bar. I just had pre-established rep counts for my toes to bar. I was able to accomplish that for my first two rounds, and then in my third round, I had a backup plan if my toes to bar went completely to, you know, broke down completely but I didn't have a clock to understand how long that set needed to take and hold myself disciplined to that. That ended up costing me so much time and then I got bottlenecked in my last set of cleans. So instead of making the mistake that I made in only setting a clock for the toes to bar, I think for both the cleans and the toes to bar, you need to have some sort of a clock and not really go by feel. This is a very, very, very uncomfortable workout that has a ton of different movement patterns. It has compression, it has spinal bracing, it has spinal flexion, it has jumping, it causes a high heart rate, it causes tension in the back, in the quads. It was just extremely uncomfortable. And if you're paying attention to your feelings, I think it's very easy to back off and throttle back and kind of get overwhelmed by the discomfort, whereas if if you have a plan and you're trying to focus on adhering to that plan, I think that's a better strategy. So had I been redoing the open workouts, that's something that I would definitely do is have my video review done and I'd hold myself and adhere to a more disciplined time construction for my toes to bar instead of thinking like, oh my God, they're failing, I have to slow down. The last thing that I think I've seen on, on this is people were, really, really slow on their transitions. So they would finish their cleans, you're really, really uncomfortable, and you take a long transition walking back to the toes to bar set. Most people, unless you're really, really high level and you're planning on finishing, are doing something like fives, and even the high level people that are finishing in the later rounds are doing maybe sets of 10 at the largest. So if you know you're gonna do that and it's not a big chunk of work, you are going to get some embedded rest within your toes to bar set. So instead of taking a really long transition to the bar, doing your first set of toes to bar, then a long transition and then doing your second set of toes to bar, I think it's better to try to think quick transition to the toes to bar, quick transition to the double unders, and then slower transition to the cleans because it seemed like the repeated cleans were the thing that were really jacking people's heart rates up in this middle group of execution. So those would be the key variables that I think things can, people can do better in this uh, finishing in either the third round or finishing in, in the fourth round. And when I go through the key variables for all scores, you can refer back to this to kind of understand how you would try to improve this from an execution perspective. 
for the people that are getting into the last barbell, I feel like if you're getting here, you pretty much know what your plan was and you're a pretty seasoned competitor and you've done a lot of Metcons and you probably had already done this workout. So I'm not gonna really go into a ton of detail for that group. But again, the key variables that I cover will be able to improve upon whatever your score was. Even if you finish the workout and think you just wanna be able to cut some seconds off and put yourself higher up on the leaderboard, I think an appropriate video review can still help you do that. Some things to consider though, faster uh, for females, I have seen some people go touch and go on the earlier barbells. I think the weight scaling for this was not really um, gender equal. So I think it's the same as week one that was kind of biased towards males because there was no scaling on the row. I think the scaling for female loading was a little bit light on this. And I think it's reflected in the female scores in 16.2, having been more people finished the actual workout and the top time Kara Webb was way faster than Ben Smith. So I think that females can get away with some touch and go sets, which I think will buy you a little bit of time. And I don't think it will blow you up if you're somebody that could potentially finish the workout. The other thing that I think you need to pay attention to is the transitional time. So if you know that there's going to be some breaks within this workout, so there's definitely gonna be some breaks in toes to bar, and at some point on the barbell, you're gonna be doing singles. So there is rest time embedded into this workout, even though it is extremely uncomfortable, then you gotta pay attention to what your transition times look like because there's not really a lot of places to be able to get time if you're trying to go and finish all five of the rounds. Then obviously unbroken double unders. I haven't seen people that are finishing this workout in a fast time that are taking a break in the double under sets. To finish this workout, it's only five sets of 50 unbroken double unders. If people are finishing and are planning breaks within the double under sets, I feel like at this level of performance capability, you need to get your double unders better so that 50 unbroken, even at that type of a high heart rate, is still a low work output for you so that you could really put your focus on to the barbells on toes to bar set. 50 in this type of a format for an elite athlete I don't feel like should be a limiting factor for people and I would say that that skill is something that you need to work on if you're finishing this workout and still taking a rest break. For people that kind of fell in these categories, maybe a planned rest break would make sense. So those are the things that we could do better from a big picture vantage point perspective in each one of the different categories. Then key variables for all scores. So whether you're finishing two rounds or when it, whether you're finishing five rounds, I think everything that I'm gonna lay out here from a second thoughts perspective is going to be applicable. The first thing is people need to warm up well. I did this workout, I didn't really know what to expect, I didn't do it in 2016, but I have seen a lot of people do it and I remember the look of shock and discomfort on people's face and having not really been exposed to a ton of heavy lifting with the compression, with the jumping and a ton of Metcons, I knew, okay, I need to make sure that everything is warmed up. I need to get all of my global flexion warmed up, so I need to be able to basically fold my body with my arms overhead. I need to warm up my squat. I need to warm up my jumping, so my ankles need to be ready to go into full plantar flexion and full dorsiflexion. You need to be able to have a tight brace and breathe, so getting your core and your midline warmed up. Making sure that you put the time into the warm up makes a lot of sense so that you can really approach this with an appropriate mind state so you don't get into the workout and have that kind of shock feeling feeling where you're like, oh my God, this is awful, and then you fall off your pace. So for everybody, and I've seen, seen this in a lot of people, that the warm-ups are just kind of, you know, people get into this anxious environment of the open, and it's very easy because you're already so excited and so stimulated to think, well, I'm already warm, because your adrenaline's pumping, nothing hurts, you feel good, you feel tight, you feel explosive. So that makes you feel in a workout that has lifting and barbell cycling like you're ready to go. But that's not necessarily what's gonna be the limiting factor of the workout. It's gonna be respiration, it's gonna be high heart rate, it's gonna be diverting blood flow from one muscle group to another muscle group. So you need to make sure that your body is ready to do this. Kyle talked about his warm up in our first thoughts video, so you can pay attention to that. Our competitor's manual also gives example warm ups for sample workouts. So make sure that you pay attention to your warm up and make sure that you're getting yourself ready biologically, like your actual body, and psychologically ready for what you have to do and what you're gonna have to go through to get the score that you're aiming for. 
Last thing, video review. I talked about this in the 19.1 second thoughts of video. This is an extremely important thing that everybody should do if they're trying to get better at a workout. I'm just gonna leave it at that. What's followed here is basically places that I think people can save time. So an actual video review, basically I'd create a chart something like this, where I have toes to bar, double unders clean. So that's the three movements. This is round one, so this is the 135 or 85 pound bar. Basically you put your time, and then you split time right next to it. Time, split time, time, split time. And then you go through for however many rounds you got in the workout. If you got three rounds, then obviously your graph or your chart is only gonna be filled out to this three. If you got to five rounds, it's gonna be filled out all the way through. And you wanna make sure that you have that, and then the places that I think that you're gonna be able to save time. So when you Look at your clean set. Basically, your clean set, the total time, so if I were to go in here and whatever this time was, and I look at however that long that split time was, that time, the amount of time you spent is the number of reps times the second it took for those reps. You can't really change that. So if it takes you two and a half seconds to do a clean, that's what your normal speed at that weight and that level of fatigue is gonna be. And you don't really wanna think, well, I'm gonna do my clean reps faster. I'm just gonna try to stand up faster. And if I stand up a second faster on each one of these and there's 12 reps, I'm gonna save 12 seconds. A, that's not realistic. And B, the extra energy that you expend to try to do those reps at a faster speed would probably change your timing and cost you so much energy that it would make your workout not effective and not improve. So, that is kind of fixed. Then everything else in there is rest between those reps. And that's really the only place that you could attack that portion of the workout. I would recommend looking at that and finding a rest time per set. So you should have a rest time for cleans at 135 or 85, a rest time for the 115 or 185, a rest time for the 145 or 225, etc. That rest time, you have to divide into the number of breaks within the set. So if there are 15 reps, there's only gonna be 14 breaks. You're not gonna have a break before the first one and there's obviously not a break after the last one. You're just gonna have it in between all the reps. Divide that out so you know how many reps, how many seconds of rest you are going to have between a lift and then try to reduce that rest by somewhere between one and three seconds. If you do that, you can save an enormous amount of time. You might be able to reduce some of, or reduce some of this rest by more in untrained athletes, but if you try to cut off three seconds of rest per lift, that's gonna be an enormous amount of time savings and enormous amount of more work. So I'd probably trend more towards just trying to be conservative and just try to cut one second off. You're only doing this workout with one or two days rest between it. So trying to think that your capacity is going to be substantially different after feeling it one time is an unrealistic way to think. Maybe in six months, if you have appropriate training, you can start to go after a more aggressive pace. But I'd try to set something that you think is realistic, adhere to it, cut it by a conservative amount, and then set a clock in the workout. You can even have your judge and then have a friend there for you that you finish a rep, you don't, have to you don't have to look at the clock, you don't have to think. Let's say you have five seconds in between your lifts of rest, they go one, two, three, four, five. On five, you're picking up the bar, you hit the clean, you drop it, one, two, three, four, five, et cetera, and just try to find that rhythm and try to stay adhered and disciplined to it, knowing that you were pretty damn close to it on your first attempt, so going after it with just a little bit of a change in your aggression and a little bit less rest is something that you probably can accomplish. The other places I think people can cut time, the transition from the clean to the toes to bar. This is something that I noticed in a lot of athletes that the cleans were so painful. That set of 185 or the second barbell for me was so unexpectedly difficult that it was really, really tempting for me to be like, I'm gonna take time and I'm gonna get up so I can stick to my plan of doing fives on the toes to bar. But I knew if I did that and then my toes to bar broke down, which they did in that set, then I would be just giving away time. So I forced myself to get up, run to the bar, jump up and do a set. And then there's kind of rest time embedded within it if you are getting to failure on the toes to bar because you have to drop down if you can't get your toes all the way up to the bar. 
The other place people can cut time is the transition from the toes to bar to the double under. So just being sloppy with how you lay your rope down, not picking it up or picking it up and standing there for 10 or 15 seconds to get your mind ready to be able to do the double unders. I think those, the, the transition from the toes to bar to the double unders, I think can be done with the most sense of urgency because the double unders are the lowest um, energy cost movement of the workout. If they're not, I think you need to work on your double under efficiency and improve that because it should be something that you could pick up either doing two sets or doing one set and just kind of get it out of the way instead of the toes to bar 25 after one or two rounds of this is a pretty big set to do while fatigued and the cleans are pretty difficult to do under fatigue as well. So your double unders is probably your best place to try to have a little bit more of a rushed sense of urgency to pick up the rope quickly. So if you have long transitions there, it's be something that I, again, you can go and cut by three to five to seven seconds if you have a 15 or 20 second rest time and try to push the pace there in the workout. Again, if you can get five to eight seconds from three or four of the transitions from toes to bar to double unders, you can aggregate a total of 15 seconds and that 15 seconds could be two extra cleans. In a leaderboard like this, two extra cleans can be hundreds of places on the leaderboard because there are obviously going to be a lot of people at each clean rep. Whereas if you're in the double unders, getting a couple extra double unders or you know five extra double unders is not gonna be as dramatic of a leaderboard jump as one or two extra cleans. So those transitional elements can be something really important to, um, to improve. The other thing, make sure you stick to your toes to bar plan and have a backup plan. So I had a toes to bar plan, it completely fell apart. I had a backup plan, but my backup plan was definitely not good enough because it gave me the, you know, I, I had the strategy in my head, okay, if you need to, break to single. So jump up on the bar, swing, touch the bar, fall off, turn around, and just keep going back and forth like that until you get to, the, to finish. But what I didn't do is transition to that quick enough. So I was trying to adhere to my threes and fives for so long. I was dropping off the bar and I was looking at the clock. 10, 15 seconds was going off the clock before I realized this is not an effective strategy. I need to go to my backup plan. So make sure that your backup plan is like, if I can't stick to my toes to bar on a five second rest, I'm gonna drop the number of reps and transition to that immediately so you can save as much time. You need to avoid doing small sets with long breaks. That's basically the worst case scenario in the workout, doing small sets and then taking long breaks. If you're doing big sets and you have the capability to do 13 and 12 and you wanna take a 20 second break between, then this is something that is just a great skill for you and you're capitalizing on it, then that's fine and that's how you run your system. But if you get to the point where you're doing small sets with long breaks, it's just not the best way to go after the workout. From a toes to bar perspective, when you go through your video review, what you wanna do is aggregate all your toes to bar time. So if you had you know, a minute here in this first set, a minute 20 in your second set, a minute 40 in your third set, and then two minutes in your fourth set. You wanna add all those up. We only have four numbers, divide them by four. When you get that number, that is the amount of time average that it took you to do the four sets of toes to bar. This is important because what I've seen and what my coaches have seen and what I actually did in my execution of the workout is that people go out, their first set of toes to bar looks great. So they finish in 50 seconds, they finish in a minute. Then their second set starts to break down a little bit, maybe one or two extra breaks. Now they have 15 or 20 extra seconds that they lost in this set then 40 seconds. And then their average set is basically 40 seconds or 30 seconds slower than their initial pace. Now that obviously means that you mispaced the workout. If that were to have happened in a mile race and your first 400 was a minute and then your average overall pace was eight minutes to finish the mile or a two minute mile pace or two minute 400 pace for the mile, that means you slowed down by 100% from your first initial 400 lap. If a running coach saw that, they'd be like, you went out way too fast, you need to throttle back in the beginning of the race, and then you need to try to average and sustain maybe a uh, 145 and try to get a seven minute mile. The same thing is true in a mixed modal format. So having a set 
understanding of, okay, in my first attempt, the average time it took me to complete toes to bar was a minute 30 or a minute 15. Then when you reapproach the workout, you want to make sure that your first set is three to five seconds faster than what your average pace was. So don't go out fast, don't give yourself the opportunity to blow up, and then try to make sure that every set of toes to bar is a little bit more linear and not having these huge, aggressive, dramatic fall-offs. Brandon has actually done some video reviews for people and actually saw that a lot of people that went after these fast toes to bar sets, in comparison to the other data that he had, were also going way slower on the cleans. So there could potentially be a cost cost of energy that going fast here is actually not just affecting your toes to bar total time, but it's actually affecting your workout from a perspective of the cleans as well, because you know maybe your core is just getting tired and you can't stabilize in the bottom. So that's everything I have to say with regards to video review. These are the key variables to improve. Uh, for the people that commented that last, last week's video review was helpful for them, thank you for that. Hopefully this week is helpful as well. Make sure that you uh, have an effective plan. Make sure that you pay attention to what the things you can do better are from each different one of the categories. Apply the video review concepts and let us know if you improve your second attempt. So that's it. Remember, Monday we'll be back with Travis versus Trevor, although he might not redo the workout because Trevor showed up on his first attempt. So we'll see and we'll figure out how to make that a good video for you. And Thursday we'll be back with First Thoughts 19.3. Brandy and Mike going head to head and they're one on one right now.